beams support buildings, bridges, and various structures, allowing them to withstand gravitational and lateral forces like wind or earthquakes. Engineers design beams based on the specific load and span requirements of a project, selecting materials like steel, wood, or concrete accordingly. Understanding beams is fundamental to creating safe, durable structure in the field of civil engineering. Today, we are exploring four vital aspects of this topic, types of beams, the various ways loads are applied to them, the support they rely on, and the reactions they generate. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy, and examine life. What type of beams do we have? Beams are generally horizontal members. Here, beam is supporting floor loading, beam is supporting roof loading, and here, beam is supporting load from wall. It is termed as lintail beam. Beams can support horizontal and vertical loads, but mainly they support vertical loads. Beams with a single span, they are termed as cantilever beams or simply supported beams. Continuous beams have supports more than one. This is a cantilever beam. By cantilever, we mean that it is fixed on one side and it is free on the other side and any type of load can be applied. By simply supported beam, we mean that it is resting on two supports and it is allowed to rotate. By continuous beam, we mean that it has more than two supports. It means that supports can be three, four, five, or unlimited supports. What type of loads do we have? Mainly, we have two types of loads, point or concentrated loads. It can be a central point load. It can be combination of different point loads. It can be off-center point load as well. And then we have distributed load. So for example, if I am putting this box over here, it is distributing load between these two points. This will be termed as distributed load. Point loads are applied on a very small area of a beam. In this example, this beam is supporting point load from the column above. In the next example, a person is standing on a beam and this is applying a point load. We can graphically represent point load on a beam like this. Units for point loads can be newtons or kilonewtons. This is another example of point loads. Here, a beam is resting on another beam. This beam is the main beam. I have represented it over here. This beam is applying a point load on the main beam. This is another example. A simply supported beam with three point loads. So this is how we represent this real beam. One point load, another point load, and third point load. Distributed loads. What are the examples of distributed loads? Distributed load is applied along the length of the member. It covers the entire or partial length of the member. Both magnitude or intensity and member length are required to work out total load. So for example, if loading is 4 kN per meter, if it is applied over 5 meter span, then I will multiply 4 with 5 to get total load, which will be 20 kN. These loads can be uniformly distributed load. It means that their intensity does not vary along the length of the beam or it can be uniformly varying load as well, which means that intensity on the one hand is smaller than intensity on the other hand. Total load is intensity or magnitude times length and total load is represented as kilonewtons. Units are newton per millimeter, but more common one is kilonewton per meter. Examples of beams with distributed load. Here are some examples. The so crowd supported by a beam can be termed as distributed load. 
snow supported on a rafter rafter is a roof beam so here if snow is being supported on this roof beam it will apply uniformly distributed load a roof supported by a beam here these trusses are resting on the beam they will apply a uniformly distributed load when we carry out a structure analysis we represent the beams like this regular uniformly distributed load we have a length of the beam and the load does not change along the length so this is termed as regular uniformly distributed load or udl and we have combined rectangular udl it means that some portion of the beam will have higher intensity than the other portion here we have 10 kN meter applied on the entire length but this 20 kN meter is applied on a portion of the length this is termed as combined rectangular udl then we have triangular loading in that case on one side we have 15 kN per meter on other side we have 0 kN per meter and we have trapezoidal loading as well which means that both sides will have some value on one side w1 is 10 kN per meter on other side it is 15 kN per meter now how to work out total load and its position the position you would have guessed right it has to be at the center of the loading if it is rectangular loading then it has to be at the center of rectangle if it is a triangular loading it has to be at center of triangle trapezium it has to be at center of trapezium so here we have length six meters you guessed it right the total load will be acting at the center and i will apply intensity with the length intensity is 10 kN per meter length is six when i multiply these two i get total load as 60 kN when we have triangular distributed load then the total load will act at the center of the triangle at the centroid of the triangle the total load will be equal to area of this triangle so area of the triangle will be half base into altitude base is 6 altitude is 10 kN per meter when i multiplied with 0.5 i get 30 kN total load is acting at one third of the length dimension from right which is worked out as 2 meters and it is two third of the dimension away from left and two thirds is worked out to be 4 meters type of supports all structures must be supported final support is normally ground most common supports are fully fixed rigid clamped or in caster support we have simple pin hinge or knife edge support roller support fully fixed support means that end of beam is completely fixed with the supporting member so if this is a beam if i am holding it with my hand it is fully fixed when i am applying loading it will not move up it will not move in horizontal direction and it will not rotate this is the beam and this is the column and this is the foundation we apply loading and this is ground level this is a reinforced concrete column and beam system the joint over here is a rigid joint which is between beam and a column and joint at the bottom is a rigid support or a fixed support as well column is connected rigidly with the foundation another example of fully fixed support we have a beam resting on a masonry wall and it is built in it is inside the wall so rigid support is provided by a wall to the beam beam is fully fixed in position this is the beam this is the column we have applied loading we have rigid support and if we see details of rigid support here it cannot move in upward or in downward direction so vertical movement is prevented by vertical resistance of the support it cannot move in horizontal direction it is prevented by horizontal resistance of the support it cannot rotate as well the support is so rigid that it is not allowing the beam to rotate beam to column joints we have a beam we have a column and when we connect them it is termed as beam to column joints beam is welded to the column providing a rigid support here again we have reinforced concrete beam these are two beams and we have a column these two beams are rigidly connected to the column 
Here we have a steel circular hollow section which is attached to the base plate and which is built into foundation. This is another type of rigid or fixed support. Here beam is built into wall, beam and wall. Beam is completely fixed inside the wall. And this is the fixed joint. Simple or pin support. End of the beam rests on supporting a structure or is bolted. The web of the beam is connected with the flange of the column. Web is this vertical portion. Flange is this portion with the help of this leg angle. This will provide a pin support. The key thing here is to have a gap, a small gap of say 10 millimeter between end of the column and the beam that will allow rotation. So in a pin support, imagine a pin support like this. It cannot move vertically, it cannot move horizontally, but when we apply loading, it can rotate. Another example, steel beam is resting on this clip angle and then it is bolted to the column. You can see there is a small gap that will allow rotation. If a beam is simply resting on walls like this, it will also provide a pin support or a pin joint. We represent pin joint with this symbol. Pin support is when beam is fixed in vertical and horizontal position, but it is allowed to rotate like this. This is the beam. We represent a pin support like this, or we call it as a knife edge support as well. It cannot move up and down. It cannot move in horizontal direction, but it can rotate. So if this is a pin support, if I'm applying loading, it will rotate. So rotation is allowed in pin support. This means that a pin support cannot take any moment at all. Where do we use these pin supports or pin joints? The most common application in civil engineering is trusses. Where trusses are triangular shapes, we use these trusses to resist loading in bridges and in buildings. They are the most efficient way to resist loading. Examples of pin support. Tate Modern Gallery in London, here you can see a beam is connected with the column with the help of leg angles and there is a gap over here that is allowing rotation. Waterloo station, you can see this pin joint or hinge joint or knife support. Another example of this Hungerford pedestrian bridge in London, not very far from London Eye. Here you can see another pin support. Sydney Harbour Bridge. You can see this is example of a pin support. Roller support. Where do we use roller support? The main applications include, in my view, only bridges. Here, end of beam rests on supporting a structure. A beam is resting on a rigid support with the help of low bearing. And most of the time, we use roller supports in bridges. A concrete wall, we attach this steel beam with the help of anchor bolts. An anchor bolt can move slightly in horizontal direction. Movement in horizontal direction will not be huge. It will not be in meters. It will really be small. It will not be more than few millimeters. And we represent roller support like this. In case of roller support, beam is only fixed in vertical direction. This is the beam. It cannot move up and down. It can move, however, in left or right direction. But that movement is not going to be huge. And of course, it can rotate at its junction with the support. It means rotation is allowed. This is how we represent a roller support. We graphically show roller support like this. Examples of roller support. A bridge roller support. Another example of roller support. Now, why do we use roller support? Mainly in bridges, if one joint is pinned, the other joint is roller. It is mainly used to allow for thermal expansion. If you're using steel members, steel members expand when heated and they contract when they are cold. In that case, to prevent a pin support from deforming, we use one of the supports as a roller support that will allow horizontal movements. In that way, stresses will not be trapped 
inside the members. My fourth topic is beam reactions. Now for finding beam reactions, simply we follow Newton's third law of motion, which says that for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. If applied loads are known, the only unknowns are reactions. Practically, it means that whatever loading we are applying on the structure, it ultimately has to be transferred to the ground and ground should be strong enough to take that loading. It should provide that reaction. Number of reactions depend on type of support. If we have a fully fixed support, you guessed right, it will have three reactions because it cannot move in vertical direction, it cannot move in horizontal direction, and it cannot rotate as well. When it is fully fixed, it will provide three reactions. How about if we have a simple support? A simple support will only prevent vertical and horizontal movement, but it will allow rotation. In that way, it will have two reactions, vertical force and horizontal force. A roller support, on the other hand, is allowed to rotate. It is allowed to move in horizontal direction. The only thing which is prevented is vertical movement. This means that it will only have one reaction, which is vertical reaction. Thanks for watching this lecture today. Click on left side of the screen to watch another video relevant to this lecture. Click on right screen to watch full playlist on structural mechanics.